Whenever you're ready. Uh, okay, so welcome everybody. Um, today we're going to be talking about something that's completely fundamental to science. We're going to be talking not about specific answers, we're going to be talking about questions. How to ask questions, how to ask the right questions, and how to go about finding answers to those questions. Um, this seems a little strange because I'm supposed to be getting answers out of you guys, but in fact, all I want you to do is ask questions right now. So, uh, learning how to ask and you know, learning where to find answers is key to science because I could tell you any number of things and you'll either remember it or you'll forget it. But if I teach you how to ask these questions, then you'll always be able to figure out how to find those answers. Um, in that way, I guess being a scientist is sort of like being a detective. Um, what does a detective do? Julia, what does a detective do? Um, tries to solve a crime. Is constantly trying to solve a crime, solve a mystery is is uh, you know another way to put it because you know they're they're taking clues and they're they're putting those clues together and they're coming up with some kind of like you know mystery solving exercise and that's exactly what scientists do. Scientists are just detectives in disguise. They're disguised as middle school teachers. They're disguised as seventh graders. They're disguised as um, evil people in white coats. But they're really just detectives in disguise. Uh, so. Um, yeah, so today we're going we're gonna to work on a mystery of our own, and it actually has to do with a, uh, a very hypothetical situation, um, a very hypothetical situation. But just imagine that yesterday when we were having these thunderstorms, and they were, they were nasty thunderstorms, that somehow or another a branch came hurling through this window, a branch broke off of a tree, when flying through this window, breaks the glass, and unfortunately at that exact moment, Pam was walking along with a carton full of brand new laptops. The branch hit the laptops. They all immediately explode upon impact. Thus, we've ruined six brand new laptops from a branch that came rolling through that window. Well, the good news is that there's 12 properties over there that that branch could have come from. And if we could just figure out whose branch it came from, whose property it came from, we could very easily say, hey, so because you didn't trim your tree correctly, six of our laptops got blown up. <laughs> it was a disaster. Pam's face is still charred. Can we please get you to, get you to buy us new laptops, right? It seems pretty simple, right? All we gotta do is figure out, so this branch, you know, we've got this branch, and we've got a few leaves from the branch. So which tree did it come from? Well, that seems really easy, right? I mean, we just gotta look at the leaves. Unfortunately, I went this morning and I collected leaves from every property over there, and I found that they look startlingly similar. We've got this one here, we've got this one here, we've got this one here, this one here, and this one here. Every single one is from a different tree, right? So, the issue here is, how are we going to tell the difference between these different leaves? And that is where the detective work comes in. So what I want you guys to do is, I'm just going to start throwing these around, and I want people to sort of call out some of the stuff that they're seeing on these leaves Oops. that sort of defines them. What do you, Morgan, what do you see immediately about that leaf? I don't know if you would count these, but otherwise one, two, three, four, five sort of extensions. What would you call those things? It's sort of points? Uh, sure. Yeah, that's, that sounds good. So in, if you were going to look in a guidebook, <coughs> you would call those lobes. It's got five lobes that comes out. Um, that's really useful. Does anybody else have five sort of lobes on theirs? Five lobes, five lobes. Is this yours? I've got three. Three, okay. So, it's probably not this one, because the leaf that we found in our classroom also had five lobes. Um, do you see anything else? Is there anything else about that, those leaves? That, that veins. It's got veins, exactly. You guys all know what veins would do in a, in a, uh, a leaf? Why, why do plants have veins, anybody? Jackie? They bring nutrients. They bring nutrients, and what else do they bring to the leaf? Anybody else? Sunlight. They bring water to the leaf. Sunlight, actually, uh, they don't need to bring that many. <laughs> uh, they, they bring water. And water is actually, but we're going to learn a lot about this, but water is, is um, one of the most important parts of a plant. Um, it actually, uh, life wouldn't exist without those veins bringing water to those leaves. Um, and I, I, really, I really mean that. So anyway, so they've, got, they've all got veins. Now, do the veins go all the way to the end, or do they stop right before the, the lobes um, come to an end? Can you guys tell? All the way to the end. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody's got them all the way to the end? OK. So, so far, this isn't helping us. Now, the good news about trying to figure out which leaf this is is that 
we've actually got all sorts of resources at our disposal. And one of them is something called a field guide. All right. Wait, wait. wait. No, I haven't started yet. Okay. Yes. Like a squared plus a squared equals c squared? Excellent. Yes. <laughs>